Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is I, Emily Sophia, here to break down for you guys season one, episode two of Limitless Badge Gun. So, spoiler alert, before I dive into the mad thick of things, as I shall be bearing all in this little review. So without further ado, let's kick it and get into it. Now, with this review, I'm not going to talk very much about the plot details because mostly it's a lot of procedural stuff. I mean, it gets kind of interesting and silly with the whole Genghis Khan gene targeting aerosol biological warfare coffee shop thing. I mean, that's the fun and all. But I'll let you guys watch watch the episode yourselves, or at least recall those details yourselves, and I will primarily discuss the merits of the show itself, the characters we've got, the sources of tension, what makes this show fun, what makes this show lackluster, maybe. But um, I think first and foremost, I will try to get any little complaints that I have out of the way so we can get on to the good stuff and the stuff that I liked. But generally, <laughs> I think I have a confession to make. I have a confession to make. If you guys saw my review of the first episode of the series from the other week, where I talked about the fact that the main reason I wanted to watch this episode is because Jennifer Carpenter is in it, and she was in Dexter as Deborah Morgan, one of my favorite women on TV of all time. And I was attempting to, you know, subconsciously draw little parallels between the show and Dexter in my mind, but they are could not possibly be more dissimilar other than the fact that the two male leads both have very consistent voiceovers and are working in the same police precinct as Jennifer Carpenter, who again, who again, her character from Dexter has a similar line of uh, a similar profession. Uh... But, you know, anyway, so I need I need to get that out of my system continuously and confess that to you guys because it's really silly. <laughs> and I just I just have that in the back of my mind. Maybe some of you guys do, too. But anyway, so um, I think that something that I perhaps struggle with a bit is well, I mean, so far. Episode one, very exposition-y, very much like, let's get you into the world, this is what's going on, this is NTT, this is the kind of trouble it can cause, this is the kind of trouble it's not going to cause for Brian, for the time being, until certain shenanigans may ensue. But, you know, so basically setting up all the players on the chessboard and now we begin. But, of course, it's just a little one-off procedural plot that we... Um, get to see this week in the episode and it's it's fun to watch unfold and whatnot but I'm trying to decipher in my mind how I feel about the character of Brian Finch because honestly in my eyes and now maybe you disagree and you're super fully entitled to do that <laughs> that's way fine by me but he seems to me to be a little bit of a shall we say a man child <laughs> now and I think it's something that a lot of people can relate to in their own aspects of life. You know, he's he is older, sure, living with his family, hasn't been able to hold down a job in a long time, was in a band, was not in a band, and then trying to pass himself off as being in a band when really he's the only one left and has been turned into a solo act, more or less. So you got that as the backdrop, and this guy is essentially being given a second chance to truly do something that matters for the world, that matters for his family, to tap into his true potential and, you know, his his creativity, his wits, and, you know, just getting to explore all these different sides of himself. Um, but the, I mean, the show moves at an incredibly brisk and vibrant pace, but I, I still am trying to decipher how I actually feel about Brian, whether or not he's, like, a laugh-out-loud character, whether or not he's going to become more tortured down the line. It's really hard to tell. And I, I just kind of don't fully know where my sympathies lie yet. I think that he's a very likable guy. I think that he comes off as very confident and cocky. And I mean, a, a lot of that, those features of his personality are enhanced by NZT because, well, he can pretty much do anything he puts his mind to legitimately. So that all makes sense. I just hope that they continue to really humanize and complexify his character just to keep to keep things interesting. I like the relationship that he started to forge with Rebecca Harris, which is Jennifer Carpenter's character. We learned a lot about her in the first episode, actually, 
not as much this week, but she is still a big force in his life. She believes in Brian and his capacity to do great things with the FBI, to track down criminals, do good for the world kind of stuff. Stuff that I think Brian is generally on board with, and he's very much eager to get out into the field. She's almost, he's sort of like a puppy dog. And she's not necessarily like his, his owner, but she's like this, this person who hangs out with dog and, you know, they chill commune friends, you know, man's best friend. Um, and so she leaves him in the house and she goes out and, you know, she's thinking like, well, I'd love to hang out with my dog. And then, you know, <laughs> so this is a terrible metaphor. But, um, yeah, I think that their, their relationship is going to continue to be interesting and they're not immediately like trying to get into any romantic weirdness. So the two of them are just trying to figure out life and times and crime together and, and she's someone who is, I think, going to be advocating a lot for Brian in the future, especially as Nas, Nas, <laughs> I think of Nas the rapper, um, the, um, the head of the uh, <clears throat> FBI division or whatever they're a part of. Um, she, she is certainly against Brian's method of things. I mean, she, she wants to understand him on a scientific level and use him as kind of a tool and a vessel for research and development and whoever knows what else. But um, on the other hand, Rebecca sees, sees Brian as a person, wants him to be able to apply himself, wants him to be able to take advantage of the fact that he can use this drug and use it for, for something good in the world. But yeah, so that's, that's going to be kind of an interesting dynamic. Of course, the, the issue for Brian is going to be finding a way to confide in the other people that he knows in his life. We don't really know a lot about his friend network or anything of that nature yet, um, but we know that he's got his family and that, that, he's, uh, that he's really close to them, and, um, and especially his father. His father, whose life he saved by working through the FBI and, you know, pulling some strings and getting him a new liver, you know, so... So he very much is attached to his father who suspects that something very strange is going on in the backdrop of things. All of a sudden his, um, his son has this amazing job and is gone and busy all the time and is just kind of scattered and strewn about his own life. Um, so that's kind of the point of tension that comes through all the fun and the silliness and the the pomp and frivolity that apparently accompanies being able to do anything with your brain. <laughs> it's good times. It's really good times. Um, but then also not good times because Brian's realizing that he has to actively lie to his family in order to sustain this. And is it really good what he's doing? And is he going to be able to do things in line with Eddie's organization, for example? His organization, of course, is the one that is supplying Brian with the means by which to not be negatively affected by NDT. And then also now uh, Eddie has has planted kind of a, an extra set of eyes in Brian's family's house in the form of the um, the nurse who fixed uh, fixed Brian up earlier in the previous episode. So there's Brian is essentially being pulled in a lot of different directions, and he's kind of a fun spirited guy who's trying to have a good time and <laughs> do what he can, but. I think that um, that the beauty and fin fantasticness of this world is probably going to start to shift a little bit as inevitably he he starts disappointing one of the groups that is invested in him. It's kind of like this trifecta around Brian where it's it's family, work, and then other. <laughs> Other, shall we say. I think that's a fitting category at this point because we don't fully know what um, Eddie's organization, like I said, wants to do with him. So, anyway. So, what I another thing that that I enjoy about the show, and it is almost off-putting sometimes. I mean, it's, it's very different from... Um, from anything else that you really get to, to see on television, but it's just the visual style and quality of the show. It has a very incredibly fast pace. There's lots of, of rapid overlays and, and graphics and, and texts and cartoons and like, 
word bubbles <laughs> like you see in comics. I mean, th the show really has no visual restraints and its aesthetic is essentially bringing everything that they possibly can to the screen because that's what it's like when you're on NZT. But the thing that I hope is that eventually we might hit a few episodes where things slow down ever so slightly because when we've got NZT in the picture, things are just rolling and every scene just kind of like collides into and rushes into the other and I want to really get to sink my teeth into these characters more into the different struggles and for it not to just be a very upbeat and vivacious procedural crime drama show. Um, and I'm, it's, it's much more than that. It's much more than that. It's just that I don't want it to, ironically enough, just kind of pigeonhole itself into this like, woo, look at how fun and crazy and whimsical everything is. Life is a carnival and you're an FBI informant who can do anything with their brain and it's magical. And, you know, like, I, I hope that the show, too, finds just enough groundedness to really give it that emotional intensity and drive. That's something that I, I would crave to experience from the show. And hopefully they're going to deliver that. I believe that they've they've got the capacity to do so for sure. Um, so yeah, I think it'll be striking the balance between the crime procedural drama aspects, the comedy aspects. The you know there, there's a lot that they can pull from, and I hope that they're able to do it in in a good way. But there there was a lot of a lot of silly moments, a lot of things that made me smile in this episode. I mean, it's it's fun to kind of watch how Brian can just like tear down some some crazy killer CEO guy <laughs> so unceremoniously in front of his entire company and just like it's it's great. It's very freeing and cathartic to see somebody who is able to do that and to, you know, Rebecca is kind of our emotional conduit like we're sort of in her shoes where she's like, I don't fully understand what's going on, but I'm going to be in this and I'm going to work with you. And I mean, damn, it. <laughs> Brian breaks into her apartment one more time. I swear he shall not live through it. And and Rebecca issued a sort of threat in that, that regard. But yeah, so there's there's a lot to enjoy in the show. There is, there is a high energy, a sense of kind of experimental fun, and yeah, very bright, very fresh and light. And I hope too that there's just enough weightiness in the mix and just enough of a sense of deliberate pacing to be like, to really feel the big moments as they hit you. Not just racing through everything at the speed of light, you know. And I think that inevitably we're going to hit that point when getting NZT becomes a problem or perhaps when it begins to be used against Brian if he messes up. It's hard to say. It's hard to say. There's a lot of mystery, a lot of world building that I think remains yet to be done. And we've we've got plenty of room and, and time to get to that stuff. So I hope that you guys will consider sticking with uh, the show with me together. That would be super fabulous. I like that a lot. But yeah, if there's anything that you wanted me to talk about that I didn't talk about in this review, then let's do that in the comments below. I'll try and join you guys if I can. But thank you so much. I am returning to my other channel that I co-host with Diego Crespo. It's the Waffle Press TV Hangouts. We're going to be starting those up and talking about things on there that I don't even talk about on this channel. So go be there too. It's fun. There's a link in the description below. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. Love the crap out of y'all. Thank you for your patience. And as always, I will be back before you know it.